thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and I want to be sure to recognize my wife, Roxanne, who the first performer first day. Well, each of you well, see, you throw a great party. You and the Thomas Jefferson Institute, I'm having fun already tonight. I've had a great time. I don't know about y'all, but I've had a great time. And I was uh, outside with all of you a few minutes ago, and uh, as everybody knows, uh, you know, it was uh, a real nice cocktail hour. And uh, I got a chance to see all my friends and colleagues, the governor, the former governors, and uh, uh, one of my favorites, of course, is my old pal, Doug Wilder. So uh, we're sitting there talking. It's true, this really happened. We're, we're sitting there talking, and uh, Doug says, you know, Jim, you know, I'm going to buy you a drink. <laughs> well, of course, as everybody here knows, right, it was an open bar, but... <laughs> well, I went back to the bar, and... Uh, and he said, just, you should just tell the bartender your money, you know, your money's no good at the bar that I've paid for your drink. So I went back to the back and said, have a glass of white wine, please. And uh, Governor Wilder said he paid for my, my drink. And uh, the bartender looked at me and recognizing a sucker when she sees one said, Wilder didn't say anything to me and that'll be $10. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad to be here, right? I, and uh, you know, I, I'm remarked about the fact that Mike said that uh, 1961 was the year that Lacey first uh, got elected. That's been a, a long time ago, Lacey. A lot of great service in between. A lot of history was in that particular year. What you probably don't know is that that, uh, that Lacey is a child of the 60s. He was born. He was uh, you know went to the legislature in 1960. Served all throughout the 60s. So he's really a legislator. That said Bob Dylan's first album came out in 1961. Uh, something that was a particular favorite of, of Lacey's. <laughs> Lacey's first slogan during that time was peace, love, and pot. <laughs> which of course meant he preceded Ron and Rand Paul by all those years. That's good. Uh, that was the year that the first Target store was open. That was the year the first Walmart was open. And uh, so that was the year the Dulles Airport was established, as a matter of fact, in 1961. That was the year Wilt Chamberlain scored 100 points, and Lacey defended him that night. Uh, and, of course, uh, my favorite team, the Yankees, beat the Giants that year. Um, folks, uh, you know, uh, Lacey started off as a Democrat. And he uh, stayed with the, the Democrats until he uh, became an independent in the, in the uh, late 60s. And of course, uh, I think his fellow Democrats thought that during that time that when he shifted the status because he, he was on some sort of acid trip. And the word is that in 1969, uh, he went to Woodstock and that's what caused him to want to make a change. Uh, and he stayed uh, as an independent, as a matter of fact, until he came off that trip in 1998 and began to caucus with the Republicans. And I was elected in 1997 and took office in 1998, and I, I just thought you all ought to know how pivotal he was uh, to me. Uh, folks, one of the goals that I had during that time was to elect the first Republican majority in the House of Delegates ever in the history of, of the Commonwealth. It was. Uh, something that uh, we have all worked on very, very hard. And uh, at the time, I think that it looked like uh, and, and felt like it was a, a strictly partisan thing. Actually, the goal at that time was to make a bipartisan state going into the new century in a sense that there would be full inclusion and an opportunity for both parties to really participate in government. Many people just don't remember how really bitterly partisan that period of time was. And the goal there was to change uh, politics forever. Well, we worked very hard, but, uh, and my predecessors did too, and we just couldn't quite get over the top. Uh, but we did a special election right at the beginning of my administration, and got, we won that special election and got just about to parity in the House of Delegates. But the Speaker refused to seat the new Republican delegate and they were going to organize the House of Delegates under the old regime because we were down one vote. 
Lacey voted with the Republicans to create parity, and the rest is history. Politics has never been the same. Governance has never been the same in the Commonwealth of Virginia since that time. And that took a lot of courage and fortitude, but it meant that Lacey was a genuine groundbreaker. And then on the second thing I would want to say is the, is the car tax cut. Many of you know that we not only ran on it, but the goal there was to deliver that car tax cut and to really do something really good just for regular working men and women in the Commonwealth of Virginia. A genuine tax cut for people who were uh, suffering under that, uh, that great burden. Lacey Putney was a patron on the car tax bill and efforts were made to derail the car tax in the legislature that year. Many maneuvers were done. Believe me, I was sitting in the governor's office and trying to deliver on that promise. I remember every single maneuver that was done and every time that an effort was made to derail the car tax, Lacey Putney voted for the car tax cut and it became law. And many people benefited from that and continue to benefit uh, from it uh, to this day. Uh, so I would close by just saying this. Uh, many people say in America today, well, as Ohio goes, so goes the nation. As Indiana goes, so goes the nation. And one is very tempted, I think, from time to time to say, well, as Virginia goes, so goes the nation. The truth is that Virginia at this point is an integral part of the entire nation of the United States. The truth is, as the nation goes, so goes Virginia. And we should never forget that for one moment. So uh, we have to think about the challenges that we face as Americans today, the many challenges that we're, that we're facing, particularly the terrible economy that we have experienced and continue to experience to this day, the distress that we're seeing in the minority communities among unemployed women, among young people with degrees who can't get jobs. These are the challenges that we face today, and there will need to be bold and decisive action. And when that time comes, and when America steps forward and regains its former eminence in the 21st century as it's had in the second, as in the 20th, uh, I can promise you that we'll be okay as long as we have not only great Virginians, but great Americans like Lacey Putney. The Fur Reform Rose Lady, we see you all.